here we are in the mid 80s. You're at Brighton High School taking a bus from Brighton to Silver Stadium to announce by yourself for yourself. Yeah, I was an audience of one uh, and, and had my own pretend radio station, which I called WJML for Joshua Mark Lewin. And uh, but, but that's where I sowed the seeds. I mean, that's where it, it all kind of came together. And I started working on the, the craft, if you want to call that. And uh, those were, were good times for me. I was a bit of a, a loner, a bit of a rebel. Could sound like <laughs> Pee Wee Herman when I say that. But, uh, that, that that's kind of where it was. All right, Dottie, so I have to figure out how did you make it from the seats into the booth at what's now Frontier Field? Well, it's the whole rely on the kindness of strangers thing. I mean, uh, Bob Gaughan and Bill Trelecki, may he rest in peace. Uh, they were the co-general managers, and they kind of figured out what I was up to, just broadcasting to myself down there in the stands. And uh, 38 degrees, as it can be some nights in Rochester, they took pity on me and invited me to the to the actual press box and I, it was just over. I mean, I just said, whatever I need to do to stay up here, I'm gonna do it. So I'm, I'm your unpaid intern starting now. And they found enough stuff for me to do and it, it all worked out. Incredible, you go to Northwestern, you graduate a bit early, you come back and the job for the Red Wings is just waiting for you. Yeah, I got super lucky timing wise. Jay Colley was uh, the longtime voice of the Red Wings and I actually just spoke with him the other day. I hadn't realized that he had been through through the whole COVID thing, and thankfully he came out of it okay. But uh, yeah, he he was leaving, and I was ready for a full time gig. So uh, the the plan is aligned correctly, and I was able to start in my hometown at Triple A ball at the age of 21, and that's a, a real blessing because most people have to go trucking off to somewhere in the middle of Idaho and and start at Single A ball or whatever. And I never had to do that. Yeah, and then you make it to Baltimore because of the connection between Rochester and Baltimore with baseball. Then we I mean, were talking the Rangers, the Mets, the Red Sox. It's been an incredible career for you. So what is the secret now that you're turning 50 or about 50 to play by play? Well, I think with play by play, it's just a matter of making sure that the, the mail gets delivered, so to speak, you know, and people are counting on you to tell them what's going on either because they're not there or they don't have the insight that, that you have access to. So uh, I've always seen it as kind of a sacred responsibility. There's enough people that care about that particular team or players on that team, and you're the conduit to make sure they, they have what they need to know. So uh, I know it's not a, a job like, you know, finding a cure for a disease. That, that stuff's really important, but that, that's not in my wheels anyway. This is the, the small thing that I can do, I hope, to, to try to give people a little bit of joy in their lives for three hours a night. And you're so passionate about this. I see so many sportscasters like you, they just know. When did you know this was gonna be your future? Oh, I was one of those kids who knew at five that this is what I wanted to do. No, no astronaut or fireman talk or anything like that. I just wanted to do this. And uh, I, I think that's good and bad. You know, I think that when you're a kid, you're supposed to dream and supposed to leave yourself a whole bunch of, of opportunities. But I just kind of had this Captain Ahab style single minded pursuit of this is what I want and I'm going to go get it. And I, I think I missed a lot of things along the way. There were a lot of things I didn't try and, and who knows what I, I might have also enjoyed. But uh, I just decided at a very young age that this is who I wanted to be and I just kind of went for it. I love it. And in Rochester, one would think, oh, you can't listen to the big games. But as I've heard you note before, we had a lot of different cities and the broadcast come into our area. Yeah, you know, pre Sirius XM radio, you couldn't just flip on a switch and, and listen to whatever you wanted to or watch whatever you wanted to. And not to sound like I'm 100, but, you know, back in the day, you had your AM radio. And Rochester is so beautifully geographically situated, you could pull in from pretty much everywhere, uh, you know, uh, other than anything west of the Mississippi. So I heard Harry Carey in Chicago and I heard the guys in Philly and Pittsburgh and Detroit and uh, obviously Baltimore and New York and fell in love with it. So, you know, I had these teachers that were available through my radio every night. I love that so much. And you've been taking some time now to do play by play of some interesting events at the house. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, COVID kind of put us in this situation. I'm, I'm, I'm in the events business and there are no events. so. I just decided kind of towards the end of March, why not create some events out of nothing? And, and they were just the most mundane things I could think of. But 
did a couple dozen of them and threw them up on YouTube and Twitter and it seemed to amuse some people and uh, I, I find myself just kind of going there these days, you know, trying to, to do things that amuse not only myself, but, but other people out there. And, and this uh, Throwback League podcast I started, I think, is probably the best example where it's uh, a bunch of World Series teams from our youth. Uh, you know, my nostalgia play is kind of mid-70s to maybe the mid-double O's. And I just put them all in a hopper and like it was March Madness, had a bracket, uh, played the season out kind of like it's Stratomatic but I had a computer simulated out, and then I, I took the play-by-play -play results into my home studio and recreated the games. And one by one, they're being shot out like it's a, a little Pez dispenser here, you know, just one game after another with the sound effects and, and all of that. So that's been a fun project, too. And it, I think for all of us now, it's just trying to stay creative and trying to stay sane.